I apologize, tech fam, this video is not for you. This video is for a follow-up to my glaucoma video that I posted almost two years ago. It's crazy that I had that surgery almost two years ago. It was February, no, yeah, it was like my birthday, which is the end of February, 2019. So we're getting there very, very rapidly. And I wanted to do a follow-up video because honestly, my DMs on Instagram are sometimes tech related, but honestly, very, very heavily dominated by folks also experiencing the same issues that I did and just wanting either somebody to talk to or have questions. Um, and so I figured a follow-up video may be helpful for some people. I don't really have too much to offer. I just wanted to share with you all my experience. So if uh, you don't care about glaucoma or this is not related to you at all, you can skedaddle now, I guess, and more videos on tech and everything else will be coming soon. Uh, this is just for the glaucoma folks that are maybe possibly researching and looking for more information. Because I often get told also that they came across my video because I'm the only one or one of the only people that have a video posted about this, which is kind of scary and crazy. I, I mean, I guess it's not that surprising, but I know there are a ton of people that have these issues um, and have been through this. So one, you are not alone. And two, I think it's just not something a lot of people talk about. So uh, let me hopefully fill in some of your answers, some of the more common questions that I often get asked. And if you have any other questions, um, put them in the comments. Sometimes I'm not so good about YouTube comments. So you can always message me on Instagram if you have any other questions or uh, anything that I may have missed in this video. But let's just get started because I don't want to make this video long either. So as I already mentioned, I had the surgery two years ago in my right eye. My pressure was very, very high for a prolonged period of time and I did suffer optic nerve damage. One of the biggest questions I get asked is did I get my vision back? The answer is no, I did not. The damage was permanent. Now granted, science maybe one day can reverse that. I have my fingers crossed. I will keep you all updated if I do ever come across any type of research that confirms that 100%. But there are a lot of studies that are in early stages that look promising. So that is exciting for people like me. Now hopefully you aren't in that stage. The reason why I think that that happened to me is because I already suffer from really, really uh, poor vision. I'm very nearsighted so my contacts I think are at negative 11 or at least my one contact is now um, so it was really hard for me to tell when I was suffering from the inflammation um, that my vision was being affected so when my doctor would do like a vision test like every week when I would go see him it would be really hard because I couldn't know if it was the inflammation uh, or if there was a you know a deeper problem and obviously now in hindsight there was a deeper problem um, the pressure would spike sometimes um, but then oftentimes we would be able to get it lower but I think maybe the up and down or just too high for a period of time uh, just crushed that optic nerve and so now I have a very 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 tiny pinhole like literally pinhole of um just it's not even like uh clear um i could read maybe a word uh, if i have like a book straight up to my face it's mostly just color and light and very blurry obviously because i don't normally put a contact in it so i just wear a contact in this eye when i wear my glasses um i do often notice a strain on my brain, I know it's kind of weird to say, but a strain on my brain because I have one eye that can see, one eye that's just like constantly fighting with the light and the color and being blurry, regardless of the fact that there are glasses on my face. So if you do experience that with only having one eye, I totally feel you. I feel like people that are completely blind in the eye probably don't have that issue. It's only when you can kind of see a little bit and your brain is trying to combine those images that I do find it really tiring. And I'm sorry, I don't have any <laughs> words of wisdom for that, it just sucks. But if you're experiencing that, uh, I too go through that and I don't have a solution to that, um, unfortunately. 
it's kind of just something that I live with and deal with and I am grateful for just that tiny bit because if I ever were to go blind in this eye, um, I'm always worried about like a retina detachment just because of my high prescription. So if I ever were to go in blind in this eye, yes, I would be blind in this eye, but that tiny bit of color and being able to see just a tiny little bit, it's obviously better than complete blindness. So to me, yes, it sucks, but I do, I am a little thankful for the tiny bit that I do have left. Um, some other questions that I get asked, did the surgery hurt? I don't remember what I said in my video two years ago. I don't remember being traumatized by any pain or anything. Um, I do remember it went very quickly. My doctor was fantastic. Uh, there was a lot of redness and blood in my eye after, but that went away after probably about a week, maybe two weeks. Um, the one thing that was kind of sucky is that my eyelid was definitely droopier than my left eye, so I could notice it. Um, it kind of just looked like I had a really, really lazy eye. My doctor said that that's normal for eye surgery. The eyes just take a longer period of time to uh, come back to elasticity, and that's because they do have to stretch your eyes so much that it just kind of stretches it out, unfortunately. It's not something I'd want to do <laughs> a lot of times because I'm sure, especially as you get older, like. They, that just gets worse and worse at recovery time. But it's one of those things that was kind of a good lesson for me in like vanity and uh, having your face not symmetrical anymore was something that I, I don't wanna say I struggled with, but it definitely was not my favorite part. So I would say that out of all the experience, that was probably the worst. And considering the fact that it was uh, a purely, a reason purely for vanity reasons, it's something that you can overcome. And I do think oh, since the two years, um, I'm looking at, I have a monitor over here. It is hard for me to tell because I can tell the difference, but I don't know if strangers can tell. I'm always waiting for somebody to ask me that I've just met if they, you know, what's with my eye or anything. And nobody has ever said anything. I don't know if they're being polite. Um, I'm sure if somebody stared at my face for a long period of time, they would notice it. And when I point it out, obviously it's more noticeable. I also, because I do have semi big eyes, I do have a bit of a bulge here on my eyeball for lack of better words. Um, you can see the implant so obviously i see that i'm sure other people do too i don't know maybe they think it's a tumor or something but nothing you can do about that um it's just one of those things that i've come to accept uh there is a tube shunt in my eye and it is what it is <laughs> i'm sure this is purely dependent on how your eye sockets are obviously mine are uh i guess deep inside. I don't know what the phrasing is, but um, so I think it just stands out a little bit more. Everyone's going to be a little different. Uh, but my doctor did say he put it on the furthest back of my eye that he could possibly. So I guess I should be thankful for that. Some other questions that I've had as far as like follow-ups. Um, I was last at the doctor four months ago and my pressure was fine. Everything looked fine. I do still uh, use one drop of uh, calm again a day for pressure and one drop of the steroids uh, prednisolone. So I do take one of those. I've tried to wean myself off the prednisolone and as much as I try, um, every few, like if I go too many days without having those drops in my eye, it, it just gets red and irritated and then I get really nervous about everything. So I just stick to one drop and that's prescribed by my doctor and it seems to be fine. So if those two drops of Comigen and prednisolone are what I need to maintain it to be okay, then I'm okay with that. I also use Zydra to keep the dryness down. My eyes are very dry, my eyes, my one eye is very dry. So I do use Zydra, it's very expensive. I have nothing to offer, you know, try to get the coupon. I don't know if they still have the coupon. Um, that brought it down quite a bit, but it is very expensive. I was using it twice a day as it's prescribed, but I did find, do find that my eyes really sensitive. So between all the drops for so many years, um, if I use the Zydra too much, it actually has like an adverse effect where it starts to bother me. So I just put it in at the end of the day to kind of like 
cleanse it from all of the horrible makeup and and grime from the air <laughs> i don't know uh and so um, I've, and I don't know if it's actually doing, but it does make it feel better. Um, it is definitely still dry. Every time I go to the eye doctor, they say it's dry. I don't really have a solution to that. Where are some of the other questions that I get asked? I do find that most people that message me are women. I don't know if that is a trend or if it is because women are more comfortable reaching out to me. I wouldn't say it's a hundred percent women, but it's definitely leans heavily towards women. So I find that very interesting. I am trying to convince myself that it's just because they're more comfortable reaching out to me, but uh, you know, um, I do find that quite curious. As far as going back to the doctor, my doctor, I have a new doctor because I moved from the West Coast to the East Coast. So my new doctor just wants to see me every six months. And of course, if something feels weird or goes wrong. So I feel fine with that every six months, just go in. Uh, last time I had a checkup, it was fine. So here's to knock on wood, hopefully the next time. And hopefully this will last me a good period of time. Obviously it's not going to last forever. So this is not something that is just going to be like, just set and forget kind of thing. Eventually I will have to, um, either get it replaced or removed, or I don't know what that looks like in the future. So that's another question that I won't be able to answer. I'm sure that's something you would want to talk to your doctor about. Anyway, I just wanted to post this follow up video. Like I said, if there's anything I missed, feel free to message me on Instagram. I promise you, I get a few messages a week, which is crazy to me, uh, from people going through the same thing. So you are not alone just because when you research, you're not finding other folks. Uh, it doesn't mean that we don't exist. And if you are on the younger side like me, um, or, uh, you know, it just kind of, happen in a very strange way. Mine was caused by using prednisolone for a prolonged period of time. And this is a side effect. So I, um, you know, like I said, you're not alone. It sucks for sure. Thank goodness nature gave us two eyeballs and you know, I just hope the best for you. Uh, hopefully science is on our side and they will be able to eventually, uh, fix issues like this in the future, specifically with regards to optic nerve damage. That's something that obviously, like I said, I am uh, keeping an eye out for. And if there's any doctors out there that have any type of information about that or um, research that they would like to share, I am all ears. I don't know if I'd volunteer as a tribute just yet, but uh, I'd definitely be interested in hearing more. So. Like I said, uh, this was just an update. If you are experiencing any issues, I wish you the best and hang in there.